Are you living in one of Phoenix's hottest neighborhoods? And by hot, I don't mean popular. I mean hot temperature wise. There are areas in the greater Phoenix metro that are literally 10 degrees different. Stay tuned till the end. I'm going to go over all the different cities. Let's go. So I just read a really interesting study about the urban heat island index and any days over 95 degrees are considered extreme heat. 95 degrees, I mean, that's kind of cool. <laughs> that's definitely a cool down for us, right? But so we're used to it. However, Phoenix, Mesa, and Tucson, which is south of us, are three of the top cities in the nation that do experience extreme heat. So where you live out here really does matter. You can get a 10 degree difference if you live in different parts of the city. So the group of neighborhoods I'm about to show you, you'll notice one thing, they are by freeways, they're by airports, they're definitely centrally located, all but one really. Most are concentrated right here around central Phoenix, the airport's in here, downtown Phoenix is in here, and then again by our freeways. And we have this little uh, area up here, which is Deer Valley. I actually grew up uh, right over here. But anyhow, there is an airport over here, but a lot of freeway intersection, a lot of growth is happening up here as well. So that could be adding to the urban heat island feel. Let's zoom in. So clearly, if you live by the airport, it is a lot of concrete. There is a lot of fuel, obviously, and it's just going to be a bit hotter, okay? So you can see there are places for sale in here. And though you will be really, you know, greatly centrally located right off all the freeways, you're going to be right by, you know, our zoo, Arizona State, Scottsdale, Arcadia, Biltmore, downtown Phoenix. So these are great locations, but they are just going to be a bit hotter. And these are definitely more affordable areas. The 88. Okay, so let's just glance at this guy right here. So it's a four bedroom, three bath with an attached apartment that has a second large kitchen. So for 388, you know, you definitely get some land, you have some space, a little bit of a remodel, you have an attached apartment. So it's going to be a little bit hotter. Your crime's probably going to be a little bit higher in this area. But if you're okay with the heat, you can definitely get a good price for living in one of these hotter areas, okay? Now, right next to it is another of the hottest areas mentioned. So this one's 265. Let's take a quick glance at that. Three bed, two bath, 1,000 square feet, built in 1946. Very cool. Definitely could be on our historic register and definitely need some remodeling though. But as you can see, you can get in here for a great price. And these areas, even though they are hot, look at all that land, even though they are hotter and they do have crime, they are going to eventually be redone and just made a little bit better to live in. So let's take a look right down here. Now this is Roosevelt Row. This is where we have a lot of our great art walks at first Friday, a lot. Um, you've got downtown Phoenix. You've got that whole vibe, bars, restaurants, art galleries. Uh, definitely this area is known for art and you're right by the freeway. So it might be a little bit hotter, of course, because there's a lot of concrete in here, but it is still a really fantastic area to live in. So 850 for a home. This is definitely a nicer area than the location we just looked at and 350 here. So let's see what you can get for 350. A one bed, one bath over here. So definitely a cute little place for $350 to be in downtown Phoenix. A, a really good deal might be a little bit hotter because you are living in one of the hot places, but this place is definitely st still a good value for your money. This next area is called Greenfield Acres. It does stretch out a little bit further to the left. You've got Phoenix Children's Hospital, Phoenix Country Club, and then you've got Encanto Park and Golf, the Herd Museum, Phoenix Art Museum. So this is definitely a great location. Coronado Historic District is so wonderful. I love it over there. Okay. And you're right by the 10 and the 51. The 51 is an excellent freeway, but yes, there is a lot of concrete. Now, the reason why the areas around it are probably not in the 10 degrees hotter is because they have more greenery, right? So when we get to the cooler areas of town, you will see that there's lots of parks. There are lots of just grass and lots of trees, which obviously helps add to shade. So this area is definitely going to be a bit more expensive. 
It's got some historic homes. It is just absolutely darling. I love it over here. I have friends that live over here. So for 523, a three bed, two bath with a pool, which is going to be a great price to live pretty much in central Phoenix and definitely a really cute lot and looks like a very nice home. Okay. So a really great price, really cute yard. And so that's, wow, look at all that grass. So you'll probably be cooler at this home because of all that grass. Now we are zooming right down to Central and Indian School. This is a fantastic location. It's called Executive Towers. Yes, it's going to be hotter. Again, lots of concrete. You can see there's not a lot of greenery around it. Let's take a look at what it costs to live in this area. So you can rent for $3,000 a month or the $3.70 for a price. Let's see what this one is. A one bed, one bath. So like I said, definitely a very nice area. Tons of entertainment, great restaurants and executive towers. You have beautiful views. And you know what? I bet it's cooler up here with the breeze, right? And and so you get to enjoy your sunset. So might be worth it to live over in this area, even if it is a little bit hotter. You've got closed in hallways. So you'll be feeling cold air conditioning in no time. Let's zoom over a little bit to the west side and right in here. So this area is Homestead Terrace. Definitely just a lot of single family homes. But as you can see, not a lot of greenery right in there. So definitely it's going to get that that concrete and that urban heat island effect. And this is definitely a more affordable area. It's an area that's being redone and fixed up. And let's take a look what it costs us to live over here. So 336, that sounds about right. And you've got 390 and you've got 339. So let's take a look right here. Three bed, two bath, and it is about 1300 square feet. Looks like you might need to do some landscaping. Not too bad inside. You know, this area, again, it will get fixed up. It will get better, but definitely an affordable price if you don't mind living in a little bit more of that heat island effect. Let's take a look at our last area, and that is Deer Valley. So up here by Deer Valley, there is an airport. It's a smaller airport, but I'm not surprised because of the freeway intersections here. And like I said, all of the growth up here, there's really no green spaces around it if you look. So definitely it's going to be hotter. This is a pretty decent area to live though. People do love Deer Valley. As you can see, 800,000 for a single family home there. You've got 575. There's some really great properties over here. There's a lot of um, really large lots over here as well. So let's take a look at this 525 with four bedroom, two bath for uh, 2,100 square feet. And definitely looks like a classic uh, Phoenix, Arizona home. Looks like a home I grew up in and actually a really darling house. You know, might need some updating, but this is a really great area to live in. Really love it. You've got your citrus tree right there. So definitely an area to consider. So those were the hottest areas of Phoenix. The thing I would take from that is that wherever you do live, look for trees, look for parks around you. I know that a lot of the master plan communities now, there's so many green spaces. They have so many trees planted. I think I was just reading about East Mark the other day in East Mesa. They have like 17,000 trees. So People out here are definitely trying to do their part to combat that heat island effect. So let's take a look now at the coolest places to live in uh, Phoenix Metro. Before we continue on, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I know your time is valuable. My name is Andrea Sheppy. I'm a Phoenix native and a full-time award-winning realtor out here. Please reach out to me anytime if you're looking to buy or sell a house or relocate here. I do tons of relocations. I love helping all my clients navigate the market. So a lot of it is going to be... Um, in kind of a little bit more on the outskirts of town, but I mean, not really, but over here, you've got Litchfield Park. We're still over here in the Phoenix Glendale border, the area I grew up in. And then up here in North, North Phoenix, which is really, really beautiful. Definitely an area to check out as well. So let's start first with Litchfield Park. And Litchfield Park is beautiful. I really should do a video on it. It's all in here. There's a lot of military. It's right by Luke Air Force Base. I've sold homes in there. It's a amazing community. It has great schools and clearly it's a little bit cooler. This is a, a little bit more of an expensive place to live. Litchfield Park's really phenomenal. So 575 over here for a nice home. And then you have 997. So let's take a look at this. 
And again, if you are interested in the West Valley, I definitely would suggest Litchfield Park. So four bed, three bath, 3,000 square feet, and for almost a million. So definitely a beautiful home. Again, Litchfield Park is just so gorgeous. And clearly, you're going to have cooler temperatures living over there as well. So that is um, one of the first places that definitely is not getting as hot as the rest of the city. Okay, the next two areas are right next to each other, and they're going to be in West Phoenix, and there's, but they're more centrally located than Litchfield Park was. And so over here is right by Desert Sky Mall. I used to go here growing up. Definitely a more affordable area. So you do have green spaces to the west, and this is a relatively smaller area. And let's see, you have a home here for 331. So let's take a look here. So definitely an affordable area, three bed, two and a half bath for 331. And again, so if you want a good priced home in an area that is not getting hot the way the rest of Phoenix is, then this might be an area for you. Okay, let's jump on over to Sunset Knoll over here. And so this area is a little bit bigger and you can see there's lots of green spaces. Again, this is an area that is not getting as hot as the rest of the town. So definitely an area to consider living at. This is a mid-priced area, a little bit more affordable over here on the west side. As you can see, $379 for a single family home. It is going to be a three bed, two bath. No garage, but that's pretty common with some of the older homes and looks to be in really nice shape. Definitely a remodel. So $379 for a remodeled home that is in a cooler part of Phoenix. Uh, definitely, definitely a good vibe there. Okay, let's head over to North Phoenix now and talk about the two places that are definitely not increasing with the heat. Now, I will say up here, now this is just a lot of mountainous area, a lot of preserves, and you have a ton of green spaces, and then you're going to get over here and you're going to get by Lake Pleasant. But you do have the 17 here, and this is being built up a lot with all of our tech corridor. But for now, it is showing that it is not increasing in heat the same way other parts of the valley are. This is a bit of a nicer area. Your homes are going to run you a little bit more over here. So you can see 575 over there and 2.75. So let's take a look at what you get for 2.75. We're at 35th Avenue in Happy Valley. So five bed, four and a half bath. So as I said, you know, definitely a nicer area. There's a mix of homes here. But so if you are looking in the multi-million dollar price point, and again, you want to live over here by a preserve, definitely a place to consider so that you are not going to heat up the way the rest of the valley is. By the way, all the areas up here are really, really fantastic. I have friends in Norterra. I have friends up here in Anthem. We gotta get way up here, friends in Tremonto. So if you are considering North Phoenix, living off the 17 up here is really great. There's Lake Pleasant over there. You know, if that is, if you love water sports, then this area is probably good for you. And it's definitely going to be cooler because you've got your water. There's less housing. There's less construction. It is being built up. But for now, it looks to be cooler than the rest of the valley. And the final area, the area that is heating up the least amount in the entire city and this is so cool because it is the neighborhood I grew up in. So who knew that where I grew up was actually not as hot? Maybe that's why sometimes people say, how can you take living at Phoenix? It's so hot. Clearly, I grew up in an area that was about 10 degrees cooler than the rest of the valley. But anyhow, so this is a fantastic area. It is just on fire. It, it's really taken off. So you've got the 51 freeway, which again, everybody loves. Paradise Valley High School. Paradise Valley School District, you're right by the 101, which can get you all around town. And you're also really close to North Scottsdale over here, which has so much beautiful hiking, golf, and then Carolyn Commons, um, just so much entertainment and amenities. But let's take a look at the houses over here now are about 400 to 600, depending on which side of the freeway you're on. So right here is actually the neighborhood I grew up in. So 539. Let's take a look at my old stomping ground. So for a three, two, uh, 1,370 square feet, 540 for this, and definitely looks just like my neighborhood. So a really beautifully remodeled home. Now remember these older homes don't have the vaulted ceilings. 
So you have to kind of get used to that. Some people really want the vaulted ceilings. They're going to be smaller. They're pretty much all three twos. There's a lot of additions over in this neighborhood as well. But um, really, really beautiful, as you can see. Oh, my goodness. I absolutely love that. Okay, but anyhow, this is a fantastic area. It's low in crime. It's by everything. And it has pretty good schools. So, uh, and bigger lots for sure. So very large lot here. It can definitely put in a pool. Now, if we pop to the other side, you also have Paradise Valley Park over here. They do fireworks for 4th of July. They do lots of events here. You have Paradise Valley Community College. So there's, there's lots of good things over here that is keeping it a little bit cooler. So 440 for a house in the coolest part of Phoenix. Okay, so a 3-2 as well. And let's take a look what you get there. So not remodeled. It's got the Saltillo tile, it, which I love Saltillo tile. Most people can't stand it, but it's just such a pain to get up. If you are buying a house with Saltillo tile, it's very, very hard to, um, to redo the flooring there. It's definitely hard to dig up. It just kind of turns to dust, but partially remodeled. So again, um, still an affordable area considering it is one of the coolest areas now in the entire city. And there you have it, the cooler areas to live in the greater Phoenix metro, or at least areas that are not getting heated up the way the rest of the valley is. All right, thank you so much for watching my video on the hottest and coolest areas to live in the greater Phoenix area. Please reach out to me anytime. Again, I'm a Phoenix native and a full-time award-winning realtor out here in the greater Phoenix area, and I love chatting the market with you. I'll see you on my next video. Thank you. Skies, blue skies, white powder, I'm in ecstasy.